so uh, so I just want to say that I was brought up as a Catholic and I, I felt that was not it and I felt very in the church I felt quite I felt sort of like an intruder uh, so I became a communist and then I discovered the communis communism wasn't very good either uh, so I didn't really know what I wanted, what I wanted, and what was going to happen. But I was obviously, I don't, I didn't think I was a seeker, but obviously I was because it's um, everything. People didn't seem to make sense because they were they were living with uh, all the time with contradictions in their lives, and I couldn't make it out. You know what it was all about. And one one day. I cycled to the lake, it was 5 o'clock in the morning and I just, I was quite tired because it was quite a long uh, drive and I just stretched on the ground, the sun was rising, the daisies were growing around and I just suddenly became one with the nature and, and I instantly thought, well, this is God because it was such a strong experience so <laughs> I came back home and I announced to everybody that God really exists. <laughs> and I thought, well, yes. <laughs> and I was trying to come to England for seven years, but I was refused passport. Um, and uh, after this experience, everything started to happen very quickly in my life, so I could, I could actually get the passport and come to England. And then uh, in England, it was in 1977 when I came, and uh, then I, c I came across different seeking books, so I bought lots of them. And I was, do I was going to different meditation groups and I was, uh, I was training to be a Hatha Yoga teacher. <laughs> and, um, and then one day uh, somebody told me, ah, there was various people a week before I came to the program in Caxton Hall, various people uh, meeting me at random and they were looking at my hands and they were saying you really have healing hands I thought well I, I, I don't think so but if they say so and then a friend of mine she came to my flat and she said you know I met this lady she she healed my back she's really a great healer so I thought I might, maybe I better come along and, and check it out um, and I came to, uh, to Caxton Hall and it was quite amazing, she met that she was wearing a white sari and she, there was these two, uh, two um, this Indian, big Indian standing lamps they were on both sides of her, burning and she looked very majestic and she looked very, very powerful um, and she was talking to people, she gave a talk and then I was sitting there and um, then she met that she, uh, just asked us to go into meditation and I had this very strong experience, like uh, like uh, like a fountain just opened in, at the base of my spine and just went really uh, through my stomach and and up. So I was <laughs> completely shaken uh, by the experience. And then I thought, that's it. Uh, I went to mother's feet. And then, uh, because I had burning in my heart, obviously I was doing hatha yoga, so I was thinking, what is this burning? Then Shimataji just looked at me and she said, your problem is here. And she was very sweet, she was saying, do you catch colds? I was thinking, colds? Yes, I do. <laughs> um, and then she was saying, you are, you, are, you are very joyful, you know, because I was smiling and she was smiling. Um, and then I, I just knew I just knew I arrived um, at my destination uh, but the interesting thing was that next day I felt I started to feel very strange because I was walking along the street and I felt that I had Shimataji's hair now it was it was so bizarre and I was walking just like she did uh, I thought, am I, go am I ever going to be myself <laughs> again? Because it was, I was walking, I was moving how she did, um, and it was quite strange. Later on I find out, obviously, that she says that we are all one, so we are in her body. So I, f 
from that from that perspective I now I understand that the experience was I was taken by Shimataji into her body through this self realization. Um, and of course then I tried to I tried to find out. That was very difficult I think. I tried to find out all about um, the secret things like um, the ashram. <laughs> it was quite impossible <laughs> to do because nobody wanted to give me the address. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so Douglas was operating the recording equipment, so I said to him uh, at the next meeting, because Shimataji wasn't there, I said to him, maybe I can help you. He said, all right. Then, um, then I said, but by the way, I mean, do you know the uh, address of the ashram? He just looked at me, he checked my kundalini, <laughs> and he said, I suppose I can give it to you. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so I went to the ashram the following, uh, the following uh, week, and then there was the Sahasrara Puja, 1980, and, uh, and I just thought I was just popping in, but um, it was uh, the puja started, so I stayed. But then, to my great surprise, Shimataji called me to do the puja. Um, and then it went on for quite a while. But then there was uh, it was strange because it was the, after the puja there was a havan, uh, which is like normally is the other way around. But after the puja there was a havan. Um, and Shimataji asked me to, see, uh, to, to do the Havan with everybody else. And the Havan was a thousand names with translations. So it took about, I, don't, I think it took about four hours. Uh, uh, so I was sort of thinking after 20 minutes, uh, I felt, ama I, I, I started to feel amazing, but at the same time things were clearing up, I started to feel. Um, uh, my legs are not really up to it, <laughs> though I was quite uh, quite used to sitting on the floor and everything. But and then I looked at this uh, outside the window, and it was getting dark. <laughs> but I came at uh, it was nine o'clock in the morning, so it was getting dark. Uh, and then there was a music program after after the havoc. <laughs> uh, but by the time I I left, I really felt. Uh, I felt very, very clear inside, and I think, yeah. I think ever, ever since, you know, I, I never missed any programs or any pujas. I couldn't have enough of, of them. <coughs> so.